Hello everyone out there on FreeCodeCamp. My name is Anya Kuba and I'm a software developer as well as your guide for this fun JavaScript tutorial. In this JavaScript tutorial, we're going to be building two word games. That is a Jeopardy game that I've adapted to work well for one player and a game of word association. This tutorial will be for those who have learned the basics of JavaScript and just want to practice with some fun games, okay? So there'll be a lot of work with objects, arrays, loops, and everything like that. In fact, here is a full list of all the JavaScript properties and methods we will be using in this tutorial. So let's dissect the first game. The first game will be my adapted game of Jeopardy. As you can see here, the styling is very basic. This is a JavaScript tutorial, okay? I won't be focusing that much on the styling because that part is up to you. In this game, when you flip a card, you won't be able to flip any of the other cards until you answer the question. And if you answer correctly, you get some points. And of course, if you don't, well, no points for you. And in the next game of word association, you will have some cards which will be populated from an array and you have to essentially get the word associated with the three tips above. If you get the answer correct, you get a point. And if you don't, that's minus a point for you. The total amount of points will be reflected based on the amount of correct and wrong answers you choose. Okay, so what are we waiting for? Let's get to practicing some JavaScript. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start off with first off creating my project. I am using WebStorm as my code editor or Technic IDE of choice, but please feel free to use whatever code editor you wish, such as VS Code or, you know, similar. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and create a new project and I'm going to call this Word Association. game. Okay, so that's all I'm going to call it. And it's going to be stored in my WebStorm projects directory. And I'm just going to go ahead and click create. So there we go, you will see a directory called word association game that has been created. The next thing I want to do is actually add the files necessary. So this is going to be an HTML file, I'm just going to call this index HTML, you can put the extension, but as I've chosen the HTML file, it will just be added for me. So there we go. We are telling our code editor of choice to treat this as an HTML file. Great. And I'm just going to call this word association game. Okay. Maybe let's make it a little bit bigger. So there we have it. The next file we're going to create is for our style sheet. So I'm going to click style sheet and let's call this styles. And I'm just going to select the CSS file. For those of you not using WebStorm, just type .css and that should be created for you. So now our code editor knows to treat this as a CSS file. One more, and that is a JavaScript file. So this one I'm just going to call app and hit enter. Once again, if you're not using WebStorm, make sure to put in the .js extension so that your code editor knows to treat this as a JavaScript file. Great. So now that we have all three files, what I need to do is connect these two files to my index.html file. So we're going to do so now with a link tag and a script tag. So style sheets, we actually do this in between the two head tags. I'm going to get the link tag like so. So this is actually a self-closing tag. And I'm just going to put the rel as style sheet. And the href is just going to be the part where our style sheet lives. Well, it's in the root of our project. So I'm just going to type in styles CSS. Okay, we don't need to go into any directories or anything like that. It's just a very simple project. Everything is just in here. And now for the script tag. So the script tag, we're going to have to make sure to put this at the bottom of our body. So once any sort of, uh, I guess, elements we want to put in. So if we put in elements here, we need to put the script tag afterwards. Okay, so make sure that's at the bottom of your two body tags. And I'm just going to put the source again as the path to the app.js file. So great. Now you will see some code being suggested for me. So as you can see, this is being suggested for me. If you aren't seeing this, this is because I am using the tab nine uh, extension, which will give me next generation code snippet suggestions. So if you aren't seeing that, don't worry, there's nothing wrong with your code editor. It's just a uh, extension that I have installed. 
Okay. So great. So we've linked up our style sheet. We've linked up our app.js file. The next thing to do is actually start adding some stuff into my HTML file in order to start building up, you know, the skeleton of our word associated game. This is a JavaScript tutorial. So the majority of our work is actually going to be done in the app.js file, but a small piece of um, HTML is still kind of needed. So I'm going to put in a div. Let's give this the class of app so we can pick it out later in our CSS and style it up. So here is our app. And what do I want to put in the app? Well, I'm going to have a question area. So I'm going to put div and give this the class of question area like so, so that we can once again pick it out in our CSS file to style it up. Now my question area, well, one thing I definitely want to have and I don't want to change is just going to be, you know, the header of the app. This is going to say, welcome to word association. Okay. And then let's also have an H3 tag, which is going to show us our score and this will change. So I'm just going to put your score is, and then I'm going to use a span element. Okay. The span element will allow us to interrupt this H three tag in line. So it won't do anything funky. It will still look like it's part of, you know, I guess one sentence. Uh, and the score, well, we're going to have to inject this with our JavaScript, which is why I want to pick out this span element. And I'm going to do so by giving this an ID. So the ID I'm going to give this is score display, just like so. So now I can pick it out with my JavaScript. Okay, so we have the question area. It's got an H1 tag. It's got an H3 tag. The next thing I want to do is add a div and I'm going to give this the class so we can style it up of questions. Okay, but I'm also going to give this the ID so we can also pick it out in our JavaScript. We can pick it out by class, but it's just neater, I think, to do it by IDs. But again, each to your own. There's so many ways you can code this game. It's absolutely crazy. So we've given it a class so we can style it up. We've also given this ID so we can pick it out in our JavaScript. And essentially what we're going to be doing is injecting. We're going to be injecting elements into here using JavaScript. So I hope you're excited for this. That's why we're picking this out. We're going to be literally appending elements into here, all in here. Great. So we're pretty much done with this page now. Let's move on to the app.js file. So the first thing I said we're going to do is just pick out this element, right? Well, we're going to pick up both these elements. Maybe let's start with the score first. What should we save this as? I'm going to say this is score display. It's going to make it a little bit bigger for you. We can actually minimize this. So score display, I'm going to use document because I'm looking in the entire HTML document the whole thing, I'm going to use get element by ID and I'm going to get it by score display, making sure it's spelled exactly the same way that we spelt it here. So now we've picked out this entire thing, okay, because we're going to want to inject the score into here. The same for the question display, because we're going to inject elements into here. So what should we call this? Well, for consistency, I'm just going to call it question display. And if I hit enter, that's actually been auto completed for me by tab nine. So there we go. We are picking things out. We're saving them as cons so that we can use them later on in our code. So great. So now that we have that, let's carry on. The first thing I actually want to do is actually just write some questions that we're going to be, you know, displaying in our word association game. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's going to be an array. So I'm going to call this const questions and make an array. And it's going to be an array of objects. OK, so each object is going to contain, you know, the actual uh, words. So we're going to have three words and then we're going to have to pick a answer based of two words that the um, word is most associated with. I didn't explain that very well, but hopefully I'm going to show you now how to do it. And then we're also going to tell ourselves which is the correct score. So for example, if I have three words and those words are going to be value, 
and then the next word is going to be estimate and then the third word is going to be evaluate so we've got three words as the quiz words and then our options to select from as in which word is most likely uh, associated with these three words well the first one i'm going to put is jury which doesn't really make sense right jury isn't associated with these three words however assess is okay so the viewer is going to see these three words and then have the option of these two to pick which one is more associated with these three so and then i'm also going to put that the correct answer is option two out of these we could go by index like zero or one it's up to you i'm not going to just purely because uh, i do do this video in, on my personal channel using an API and that API actually happens to use this format so not using indexes but just simply saying that option one is not correct but option two is correct so that's why I've done it this way again it's up to you how you would like to do it so there's our first question let's go ahead and create some more so for now I'm just going to make a few of course you can have as many as you like. Like I did say, I do do this tutorial on my own channel using an API that actually gets loads and loads of questions. There's a huge amount. So if you want to check it out, please do use the link in my description below in order to uh, essentially get the link for this a tutorial. Okay, so these are just hard coded for us, as I mentioned. Okay, so I'm just going to paste another three that I pre-made earlier. So there we go. Okay, those three I've just pasted in. Please pause here if you need, or the code will be available in the description below as well. So those are my five questions along with the correct answers. Okay, so we're now you're going to use this array in order to create new elements using loops. OK, so this means that if you want to add more questions, then, you know, each the elements will be easily created for us and so on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, well, actually, let's start with the score. So the score is going to change, which is why I've used let. And now it's not good enough just saying that the score is zero. We're going to have to actually put it into our HTML. And we're going to do so because we've already picked out the score display. So I can use this const and I'm going to use text content and I'm just going to use the score variable. OK, so that's all I've done. And now making sure that it's just one equals. And now if I view this, I'm just going to open this up in WebStorm. I can actually just use this button right here and that will open it up in my browser. OK, so you will see the score has been added. Ta-da! Wonderful. Uh, for those of you not using WebStorm, you can just copy the path. So you'd copy the path here and then paste it in your browser. So I'm just going to do it uh, for you. I'm going to get the absolute path and then paste it in here like so. It's the same thing. Great. It's going to minimize this again. So wonderful. So we are showing the score. The next thing that we're going to do is write a function to populate the question. So just like we got the score display here, we're going to now get the question display and populate it with questions. So I'm going to do this all in a self-contained function, however. So the function is going to be called populate questions. OK, it's just what I've chosen to call it. Now, we're going to actually use for each, so essentially a loop, in order to create a bunch of divs that are going to be our question boxes. They're going to hold all the question stuff together. So based on how many items I have in this array, so I'm going to get this array. I'm getting the array. I'm going to use for each and for each item in my array. Now we know there's five items. I'm going to choose to call those items, each one of them a question. So for each item, which I've chosen to call question, what I want to do is essentially create an element. I want to create a div. OK, and let's just save this as question box so we can use it in our JavaScript. 
const question box. Now I'm actually going to add a class list so we can do so with class list add and I'm going to add the class of question box to the div that we just created. Okay, so that is how you would do it. You would use this method in order to add the question box class to the div we just created. Of course, we won't be able to see anything quite yet. We haven't styled any divs and we haven't actually put that div back into the HTML. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. So for now, what can we do? Maybe let's style up the question box just so we can see things visually first. So I'm just going to maybe make this a little bit bigger and grab the question box like so, and let's do some styling. So my question boxes at the moment, I'm just going to give them a background color. Uh, I'm just going to use an RGB color for this. Just like so and give each one a margin of 15 pixels. Okay, so that's all I am going to do just so we can start seeing some things. So we've created a div. We added the class of question box to it, which is essentially just make it black or the margin. The next thing we need to do is put the question box into our question display. So we can do so. Let's get the question display display and I'm going to use append to put in the question box okay and then I'm just going to call the function so I'm just going to call it to make this work and now if I refresh this you will see there are five question boxes in here we need to put something in them in order to actually see that they are black so all I'm going to do is go back in here and for now, just so you can see that this is actually working, I'm just going to put box. Okay, so I'm just putting the string of box. Ta-da! So there we go. Box, box, box. Perhaps maybe let's, you know, give this text. Let's make it white just so we can see what is going on. In fact, I'm just going to make it slightly off white. So RGB 230, 230, 230. Great. So amazing. We are looping in order to get question boxes made for each of our questions. Let's carry on. So hopefully that makes sense because we're going to be using this logic a lot in this tutorial. We're just going to be kind of repeating this in order to create more elements. Okay, great. While we are here, I'm actually just going to grab the app itself. So the div of the class of app, just to make sure that everything is centered. And I'm actually going to apply the font family of Trebuchet Sans to it as well. So it's so a Trebuchet MS, sorry. Uh, and then just some backup ones too. So maybe let's have Lucinda. Grande, Verdana, sure, those ones. So to center everything, I'm going to use display flex. So this is flex box. Okay, you have to use display flex in order to do these next few lines. Otherwise, they will not be applied. So justify content comes with flex box. And then text align does not actually come with flex box. So text align center, that's just to center all the text. And I'm going to give it a padding of 100 pixels. So the app is going to have a padding of 100 pixels. Great. And now the question boxes live in the questions div, right? So we're inserting them in here. So I'm just going to style up this div a little bit too. I just want to make sure I'm going to use Flexbox again, by the way, I'm going to use display flex. And I just want to make sure that they wrap. OK, so if you change the size of your screen, they kind of wrap over each other and you do so with flex wrap wrap. And I'm also going to center them. So justify content center. Wonderful. And I'm just going to start the question box a little bit more. Um, let's make give them a border radius. I'm a big fan of the border radius, not to make things look harsh. I think it's always like quite a nice thing to do. I think three is fine. Maybe let's go for 10 pixels. 
I'm also going to give it a padding, but the padding is not going to be equal. I'm going to give it padding zero from the top, 40 pixels uh, to the right, 10 pixels on the bottom, and 40 pixels to the left. Okay? So that's what I've done. Great. So that is our question box looking good. And if we look in here, it just kind of looks more like that now. Okay, so each question box is ready to have our questions be actually put into them as well as, you know, some buttons uh, and so on. So let's continue. So back here. So instead of having this just say box, we're actually going to use for each to show each of the three quiz words from this array. Okay, so we're going to do that next. So again, this is going to be a for each. We're going to go into the questions array. We're then going to go into the array and then find the quiz key. And then we're going to use for each. And for each one of these, what should we call this? I guess it's a tip, right? We can call it a tip for each tip. So tip, we are going to essentially create a P tag. So document create element, and the element we want to create is a P tag. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. And let's save this as const tip text. Okay, again, you can call it whatever you wish. So we've created a P tag. The next thing we're going to do is add a, uh, we're not going to add a class lips. We're going to get the tip text and we're going to use text content. You can use inner HTML. It's whatever you want to do. And then we're just going to assign the tip itself. Okay. So we're just going to assign fast and then quick and then prompt. Okay. And then finally, of course, we need to put it in something, but we want to put it in the question box this time. Okay, the question box we put into the question display, but into the, okay, so let's go back here. The question box, this thing, let's look in here. So I'm going in, here's our HTML, and then we grab this, this is the question display, and we inject these question boxes. Now in each question box, we also want to inject the tips, right? So we're going to do that. So I'm going to this time get the question box that we created up here and I'm going to use append tip text. Okay, so now if we look in here, ta-da! So once again, see we're just adding elements, adding them using JavaScript. So now each question box has p tags with our tips. Great! Okay, so hopefully this is solidifying a bit more the more we do it. Let's carry on. I also want to put in a logo. So let's do that above here. So before these get injected in the question box, because they do kind of stack up when you inject things. So you need to make sure that whatever order uh, you want to put things in it has to go from top to bottom. So let's call this logo. Um, yeah, let's just call it all logo display, sure. And I'm going to create a element. Actually, let's make an H1 tag because our logo is actually just going to be some symbol, okay, of the internet. <laughs> of course, you don't have to. You can make an image or something. But all I'm going to do is go logo display. So I'm going to grab this logo display and I'm going to use text content. And I'm going to use this, uh, because it's a word association game, I'm going to use this pen symbol right here. Okay, so that's all I've done. It's just a text symbol. So we've added that. And of course, once again, we need to put it in the question box. We're going to get a question box and we're going to append. You can append child. Append actually allows you to add multiple things. Uh, where a child just allows you to append one, I believe. And the thing we're going to append is the logo display after we've added some text to it. So great. So once again, if I refresh this, there is our logo. Cool. Of course, we can style it up as well if we wish. A simple way to do this without giving this a class name, actually, so that we, you know, we don't want too much, too much overkill, is I can actually go into the question box and any H1 tag, 
that lives in it will have the styling. So I'm just going to make it go left by going a line, text to line, left, and let's maybe change its color too. So I'm going to go RGB 177136211. Okay, but of course, if you put in any H1 tags into the question box, this will have the same styling. So just keep that in mind. But otherwise, it looks like this. Great. So we have our tips. The next thing we do is our two buttons that will show us the two uh, potential answers we could have. So let's do that next. So we've just added the tips here and we are putting the question box into the question displays. But before we do that, we need to do some more stuff. So the next thing I want to do is actually create a div that will store our two buttons so that we can keep them together. So I'm going to use document, create element, and we're going to create a div just like so. And let's store this as question buttons, as it's going to hold our question buttons. Uh, and this time I will actually be adding a class list to this. So question buttons, class list, add question buttons. Thank you, tab nine. And of course, also we need to append it. So this time I'm just going to go grab the question box again and append question buttons. Okay, so we've put in the div that has the class of question buttons into the question box. The next thing we need to do is add some actual buttons into the questions buttons this time. So I want to do this. We are still in the loop. So if you can see here for each question, we'll make sure you're still in between these curly braces because we're looping over each one of these. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And in the loop, I want to get the options. Okay, so we've called each item in the loop question, which means that I'm going to get the question quiz. And for each quiz item, what do we want to call this for each first? For each option, let's call it. Well, what do I want to do? Well, I want to create a button. So let's use document create element button. I'm going to save this as the const question button. Okay, so singular this time. So we're essentially creating two buttons as we have two items in the quiz array. And now I'm just going to give this a class list. So question button class list add question button singular. Okay, well, of course, we are yet to write this class. And I'm just going to give it some text content too, so we can see what's going on. Question button text content, and that's going to be the option. Okay, and of course, let's not forget that we need to actually append this into the question buttons. So I'm going to put it in here, question buttons append the question button singular. Okay, so it's going to loop once, it's going to put in the first one, it's going to loop a second time, it's going to put in the second one after, of course, we assign it the class list and assign it the actual option itself. So let's have a look in here. And ta-da! Oh, we've picked the wrong thing. I mean, that's good, right? We are figuring this out. It's not questions quiz, it's question it's options. So each of the questions options. So, ta-da! So we are doing it. We have our two options. This is looking good. Let's take a break from some JavaScript and start this up a little bit more, okay? Because we still have a bit to do, we need to add an event listener to the question button itself that's gonna check for answers, disable buttons, make sure we can't click on a button again, and so on. So let's take a quick break and relax our brains with some styling. So. Let's actually pick out the question buttons and question button to style up. So I'm just going to use the class of question buttons. And I want to make sure that everything in here, so the two buttons that we created, are going to be next to each other. So I'm going to use display flex. And just to be sure, I'm going to give it a flex direction of not column, but row. 
And now for each individual question button, I'm going to give each one a margin of five pixels. Some padding, 10 pixels from the top and bottom and 20 from the left and right. I'm going to give it a border radius, which is going to be 20 pixels. Make sure to spell that correctly. I'm going to say border none, so we get rid of the generic uh, button styling. And then background color, I'm just going to go with RGB 75134111. Okay, and the text is just going to be white, but I would like to make it RGB. So maybe let's make it a tiny bit off white. RGB 255255255. Great. However, if we also then get the uh, question button, and if we add disabled to it, this is going to be for later. I actually want the background color to be like a dark gray RGB 189189189. 189. Something like that. Maybe even a little bit darker. Okay, of course, that hasn't happened yet. But when we do disable the buttons, uh, because we will be doing that, that's just what I want to do. And then also the text, I want to look kind of like this grayish as well. So it looks like we can't click on it. Great. So now let's carry on. This is what our buttons should look like right now. Okay. And you can see these are wrapping just like so. I'm just going to make this maybe a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. It's totally up to you how you want to view this. Let's move on. So now that we have that, let's actually add a, an event listener to our button so that it handles checking for results. So we're going to do that here. So again, we're going to grab the question button. So the question button that we just created and use add event listener to listen out for clicks. And if a click is done, we want to check answer. So this is a callback function that we are yet to write. Okay, in fact, just for now, I'm just going to do this down here. I'm going to write function check answer. And I'm just going to console log checked, just so we can see this is working. Okay, so again, inspect this page. Get the console log up. And if I click on any button, it'll say checked. See, checked, 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 checked. So we know that has been hooked up. The event listener is working. Let's carry on. Now, we don't just want the console log to say something, right? What do we want to happen? Well, let's think about it. I actually want to check if the answer is correct. And we already have this data stored in an array. And if it is correct, I want it to say correct below. Or if it's wrong, I want it to say wrong. And I also want to disable the button because we clicked on it. We can't click it again. And if it's correct, I want to add a score. And if it's wrong, I want to minus a score. OK, so that by the end, you have a final score that's based off how many wrong and right answers that you have. Cool. So Let's do it. Let's do all of that logic next. So to do this, I'm actually going to have to pass some things through into my check answer function. So I'm going to pass some things through. So I've got to open up my parentheses, but uh oh, this means I'm calling the function. It's not a callback function anymore. So we need to do this to make it a callback function. OK, otherwise this will just check answer without me clicking. It'll just be like Bleh, open because obviously we're using parentheses. So it's going like Phew, and releasing all of its function wonderfulness. So make sure to write that in order to make this a callback function again. And the things we're going to have to pass through are, well, let's have a think about this. I actually want to pass through. Well, I want to pass through the. I definitely want to pass through the option. So by that means I want to pass through this. I'm going to pass through this and then I'm also going to pass 
through whichever index this is, because we know that, for example, this is the correct answer, right? It says two. So we're going to pass through the question's correct answer. And we're also going to pass through the option that we clicked and then its index value, okay? So where it sits in this array. So let's do that now. So we're going to have to give this an index. So I'm going to choose to call this option index. So for example, I'm just going to show you what I mean by this. I'm going to pass through the option and I'm going to pass through the option index. And here I'm just going to console log the option that I've passed through. So let's pass through the option. And then let's also console log the option index. Okay, and if I go in here, let's click on option one, two, click. So option we clicked on is assessed. The option is passing through. The option index is not defined. Why is that? Let's go back here, passing through the option index. Ah, but we're not passing it through into the check answers function. So now let's click on this one. Great, the option is assessed and the option index is one because this has option index zero. Okay, so each of them, this would be zero, one, zero, one. You can check it, that's what it should be. So we want a way to say that, you know, the correct, we need to also pass through the correct answer. So let's go ahead and do that. We need the questions, correct answer. So we know this is either going to be a one or a two, right? So let's change the option index. Let's add plus one to it. So instead of dealing with indexes, we're just literally going, it's either option one or two. So that correlates with the way that we are counting the correct answer here. So it's one or two. So we just need to know that if this equals this, then it's correct, right? So let's pass that through. I'm going to name it something else here because as long as it's in the correct order, it. Uh, we don't have to call it the same thing. In fact, it would be probably less confusing if we just call this the correct answer. Right? Okay, so this means that if, I'm just going to move this up, if option index equals the correct answer, doesn't really need to be strict, then we know that it is, well, Correct. Let's just put that back in there because it's shouting at me. So then we'll just add one to the score, right? And of course, we need to display the score. So score display text content score because otherwise we add into the score, but we're not updating our browser to show the new score. So that line is important. Okay, so that's all I am doing. Else, if it's not, we're going to minus one from the score. And again, we need to show this new score, right? Because it's not good enough just updating the score in here. We need to actually show that in the browser too. Great. So let's check it out. So if I click assess, cool, I get one to the score because it's right. And if I click jury, well, minus has been added because we know that is wrong. So this is working. This is looking good. However, look, we can cheat, right? And also be quite nice to disable the button if we've clicked on it already. So let's work on disabling the buttons now. To do this, we're actually going to have to collect which items we have already clicked. So I'm going to make an array. Let's go ahead and maybe do that here. So let clicked. So we might want to, you know, change that. It could be con. Let's just keep it as let for now, just because I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with this yet. So here's our array. And if we click on something, well, no matter if it's right or wrong, I'm just going to put it in the array. So here's my array. I'm going to push the option in. So this means, actually, I'm just going to console log out the clicked array for us here. So no matter if it's right or wrong, we're just collecting things in our clicked array, right? We're collecting them so that we know this is clicked and we're going to disable buttons thanks to this. So great. I'll just get rid of that. 
So this means that actually, maybe let's pass through the question button in here as well into the check answer function. So the actual button itself, because we can do that. You can do pretty much anything. And now we're gonna get the question button and disabled uh, is not gonna be true. We're actually going to look in the clicked array. And if the clicked array includes the option, then we know, so the option that we clicked, then we know that the button should be disabled. So let's try it out. Click, I was disabled. Click disabled, yes. This is looking awesome. How cool is this? Amazing, so great. Now, one last thing, it would be quite nice to have, you know, like a display right or wrong under here, right? So that we know immediately if we are right or wrong. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. In fact, okay, we are going to create, so at the bottom, once we've put in everything, I'm actually gonna put in another div that's gonna show our answer. So I'm gonna do so right at the bottom here. So I'm gonna use document, create element. I'm gonna create a div this time and I'm gonna call it answer display. And we're gonna get the answer display and I'm going to give it the class list, class list add of answer display, which we're gonna start up later. And of course we need to put this into our question box. So question box append answer display. And now let's style it up a little bit. Perhaps we should just we can do that. So I'm going to get in my CSS file. Let's get our answer display. And I'm going to just actually hard code a height for this. So no matter if it's empty or not, it's going to have the same height. And I'm just going to center everything in here. So once again, I'm going to use Flexbox, display flex, align, item center, justify content center. So there we have it. Okay, so we've got our answer display. And now, I'm just gonna make this smaller again. I'm actually going to write another function. So there's our function check answers. We're gonna get function get result. Or maybe add result, because that's what we're technically doing. We're adding the result into the answer display. So function add result. Well, what do we want to do? Well, this time I'm actually going to, based on the question box we are in, so when do we want to call this function? I guess we want to call it after here, right? We want to do it here. Or if we do it based on so if we are, if it's the correct answer, we're going to add the score and we can pass through the actual question box, right? Because we want to add it to the question box. Yeah, so let's get the, or we could do answer display. Yeah, let's pass through the answer display. So we've got the question box. I'm going to pass through the answer display as well into check answer and we're going to say that we're going to add the result to the answer display and that result is going to correct okay which means that again we can just use the same function to pass through different variables to change the outcome so let's have this say wrong okay so this means that we know we're passing through the answer display and we're also going to pass through the actual answer. Okay, so this means we can grab the answer display uh, and then we can use text content. In fact, we probably want to clear anything that's in there, right? Because we, otherwise we'll just be adding more. We, we'll be adding correct, wrong, correct, wrong, d depending on which one we click because we'll just keep adding. So we want to clear anything that's in it. And then we want to get the answer display text content and choose to put the answer that we pass through, okay, as the second parameter 
Okay, so we're, if, we're going to either pass through correct or wrong, depending on if we're here or if we're here. Okay, so that's all I am going to do. And I feel this should be it because we're already putting in the answer display into the question box up here, but let's check it out. So, jury. Let's see, answer display. Mm, no, it seems we are not putting that in here. Answer display, answer display, just to see what we are clicking. So if we click on here, answer display adjacent. Ah, because we're adding the answer display here, because it needs to be after the options, we can't then obviously add it in here. That's my bad. So what I'm going to do instead is pass through the question box we've just created into check answer because we can pass that through. And then that means we are passing that through into check answer. So let's get rid of this and pass through the question box, which means that on the add result, we're gonna pass through the question box pass through the question box. This is a question box. And it means that we are going to get question box and get the, uh, or we can use query selector, actually query selector to find the div with the class name of answer display. So before, if you notice, uh, this looking in the entire document, you can actually just look in a uh, element. So that's what I've done here. And let's save this as answer display. So we don't want document again, we want to look in the question box. Okay, cool. In fact, we might not actually need this because it overrides it. So just get rid of that. And great. So this is looking good. One last thing I want to do in that is just change the color of this based on if it's right or wrong. But this is super, super simple. All I'm going to do is, of course, get the answer display. Uh, I'm just going to remove any class list that might exist. So if wrong exists, I want to remove it because otherwise it will just add, you know, it might cause some funky issues. So remove, if there's a wrong class or a correct class, remove both of those. And I'm gonna get the answer display and use class list add. And I'm just gonna add, well, actually we can just pass it through in here to make our lives easier. So the class name I wanna add is correct. And if it's wrong, the class name I wanna add is wrong. So I'm gonna pass through class name and just use that to add a class name. And this also means that, of course, we need to do it here. So we can make sure that it's just on the answer display. If I do correct. So there you go. This means that it's on the same div. The class is on anything with the class answer display. And the color of the text is going to be RGB 211211. One, seven, and then I'm also going to do answer display wrong, and wrong is going to be two one 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 three four one one seven. Okay, so great. There we go. We have now finished our game, okay? It's kind of foolproof because we are disabling buttons. So you can't cheat, I don't think. Uh, but let me know what you think of this game.
Okay, so wonderful. We've just finished our game in pure vanilla JavaScript. If you are interested in taking this a step further and you'd like to learn how to use APIs in order to get random questions, then please do check out the video, as I said, in the description below for this on my own channel. Okay, so I'm going to start off on WebStorm, which is my IDE of choice. It is the code editor that I'm going to be using today. And I'm just going to click new project right here. And let's call this Jeopardy. So Jeopardy Vanilla JS, just like so. And I'm just going to click create. So there you will see a directory has been created for me. Of course, there is nothing in this directory at the moment. We're going to have to add some files. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a new file. There's going to be an HTML file. I'm just going to call it index and select that it's an HTML file. Now, if you aren't using WebStorm, you will have to put the extension so that your code editor knows to treat this as an HTML file. But we are using WebStorm, so I'm just going to go like that. Great. And now let's call our project something. This is what it's going to display in the browser. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this Jeopardy. And now let's create some more files because we're going to have to store our styles somewhere. So I'm just going to go in here, create a new file. This time it's going to do a style sheet. It's a CSS file. I'm going to call this styles and select that it's a CSS file. So there we go. And you can see the extension has been added. Wonderful. And one more file. This is going to hold our JavaScript and I'm just going to call it app. And as you will see, the JS extension has been added so that our code editor knows to treat this as a JavaScript file. Great. Okay. Now I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. We need to link up the two files we made to the HTML file. So we're going to do this thanks to the link tag, just like so. And the reference to this is just going to be the path to my styles CSS file, which is in the root of my project. So I don't need to worry about going into any directories or anything. And it just looks like that. And next, we also need to link up our JavaScript. And we're going to do so with a script tag. And the source of this, we're also going to give the path to our app.js file. So just like that. Okay, making sure that it's above any HTML that we write because this needs to be loaded first. Now, in here, I'm just simply going to put the bare minimum of what we need. And that is going to be an H1 tag that's going to say, let's play Jeopardy. Okay, so just like that. And I'm going to now make a div that is going to hold all of the game in it. Okay, we're going to be injecting stuff with JavaScript into here. So we, of course, need to pick this out, and which is why I'm going to give this the ID of game. Okay, and we're going to be injecting stuff with our JavaScript. We're going to be injected it exactly in here in between these two divs. But I will show you that later on. So we've got the div with the ID of game. The next thing I'm going to do is just put an H2 tag that's going to show our score. And I'm going to use a span tag so that we can add in the score dynamically later on. OK, so for to do this, I'm going to have to pick this out. I'm going to, have to pick it out um, in my JavaScript, which is why I've given it the ID. And I'm just going to give this the idea of score. OK, so by using the span, it will just interrupt this H2 tag and it will appear just like one sentence. Great. So now that we've done that in WebStorm, I can just click this button and it'll open up the game and the browser for me. Or if you're not using WebStorm, you can just open this up by yourself. You just need to right click here, copy the path, make sure it's the absolute path, and then just paste that in your browser like so. So you're literally going to wherever your index HTML file is on your computer. OK, and opening it up. Great. And if I inspect the page, this will allow me to get up my console log to carry on coding. So let's carry on coding. Let's get to adding our element with JavaScript into here. So to do this, I'm, of course, going to have to pick out this div. I'm going to pick it out based by its ID. And I'm going to do the same for this one right here. So the span element too. So in here, we're going to use document get element. I can do by ID. Why not? By ID game. And I'm going to save this as something. What should we choose to save it as? 
let's just save it as game. And let's do the same for the score. So I'm going to call this score display document get element by ID and the ID was score. So now we've essentially saved these two elements so the span and this so that we can work with it in our JavaScript based on these const. Okay, great. So before we carry on, let's actually get some data. So of course, we are just making a game using vanilla JavaScript. If you do want to learn how to use APIs, build out a backend and so on, uh, I do have a link to making this exact same game just with a open API. So we won't have to do any backend work for this particular one, but I'll show you how to use fetch and just make an API request in order to get a lot more data that we're going to be hard coding in here. Okay. So we're just going to hard code an array of genres, five genres that have three questions each. So jeopardy category, I'm going to save this as categories. And this array is going to hold essentially our uh, categories. So the genre, the first genre is going to be who. And then each genre is also going to have its own questions, which is going to be an array of objects. So this is going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of like interesting stuff that we're going to be working with today, especially if you're new to working with arrays and objects and data. So the next genre I'm going to actually have as where. And I'm just going to have an empty array for the questions as well. Okay, and we're going to have five of these. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to show you what the first object looks like because all five are going to have the same kind of uh, shape. So the questions in my questions array, like I said, there's going to be three questions each. Each one is going to be symbolized by an object and the object is going to look like this. It's going to have the question itself. So for example, we can have who wrote Harry Potter. That's my question. And then, of course, we'll have two answers we can choose from. So I know in Jeopardy, you just meant to shout out the answer. But of course, this is an online game. So I've just chosen to have two answers available to the user playing. And then we'll show the correct answer. So JK Rowling is one answer. And then we're going to have J.R.R. Tolkien as the second answer. And then we're also going to have the correct answer, which in this case is going to be JK Rowling, making sure to spell it exactly the same. Otherwise, this will cause issues, even with the capital letters and so on. It needs to be exact. And then the level we're going to have easy. Okay, so this is what we're going to have. This is how our question is going to look. We're going to have three in each object genre. So I've actually pre-done this for you because you don't really want to sit here watching me type out all the data, I presume. So I'm going to just paste it in here like so. So there we go. As always, this will be available in the description below. The final code will be available, so please don't worry. So I'm just going to talk you through this. Under the genre who, we have an array of questions. So here's the opening uh, bracket to our array. And there's three questions, one with level easy, one with level medium, and one with level hard. And then we got the next object, which is exactly the same. This time the genre is where though, and the questions are more around where. But again, they have the answers available, the correct answer, which is exactly the same down to the uh, capitals and not capitals, and then the level. And then we have when, and then we have what, and then we have how many. Okay, so please feel free to pause here and have a look at this data. Once again, get it from the description. Just make sure you're comfortable with it before we carry on working with this data in order to build out our Jeopardy game. So the first thing I want to do is add a category, right? So we've got our five Jeopardy categories and I'm going to use each of the categories in order to create a column. The column is going to have the name of the category and then each three of the questions. OK, so that's what I'm going to do. There's going to be a lot of for each and loops in loops. OK, because we're going to loop out five columns and we're going to loop in each column the questions and so on. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Let's go and get to writing our first function. So I'm going to write function add category. 
And what do we want to do? Well, actually, let's get this array. I'm going to get the Jeopardy categories, Jeopardy categories. And for each, let's call it a category. I'm just going to pass it through into the add category function. Okay, so essentially all of this, here's our first category, right? From here to here, all of this is being passed through now into this add category function, but we're not doing anything with it yet. Let's actually pass it through. Now we need to get the category genre first. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to make a title element with it. So let's do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually use document create element in order to create a div. And let's save this as something. I'm going to call this as a column. Okay, we're going to create a column. And in fact, we're going to get that column and use classless add the uh, class of column so we can style it up later in our style sheet. So it actually looks more like a column and not just a div. In fact, maybe let's be more precise and call this genre column like so. So we made a div. The first thing I said we want to put in the column is a like a div for a title. So I'm just going to use document create element div again. Thank you, tab nine. And let's call this genre title. And this time genre title, let's give it class list add genre title. So we can again style it up. And I'm just going to use inner text to actually give it the genre name. So like I said, we're going into here getting the genre okay so we're getting the string of who and then what and why and so on so all five categories so that's all i'm doing even though at the moment you won't see anything in the browser right because we're, we've created elements we've given them class names we've put some text inside them okay we've done all that but we haven't actually put it back into our html have we we need to do that now so this is why I picked out the game. So this is why I picked out this, because I want to put my first five columns that I'm making into here. So I'm going to do so like so. I'm going to loop over. So as soon as I make a column, I'm going to get the game. I'm going to use append to put in the column we just made. So that will loop for each time we have that. So we'll go five times, we'll add a column, we'll add another column, five times that will do it. But our column also needs to have all of this in it, right? So I'm gonna get the column before we put it back in the game, column, and I'm going to append the genre title in it. So now if we look in the browser, ta-da! And I'm just going to show you what this looks like in HTML now. So that's what we made before, remember? That's what we wrote in our HTML. But with the thanks of JavaScript, I put in five divs that have the class of genre column. And each one have another div with the class genre title and the genre itself. So we've done it, okay? We've done our first for each in order to create elements using JavaScript. Take a break here, let that soak in because we are going to be doing this again, like I said, to add in each of the three questions into each column. Uh, and first off, let's actually take a mental break with some styling because styling is really nice, it's really easy. And we'll allow our brains to maybe, you know, slow down a bit, a bit before we do another for each again. So, first things first, I'm just going to style the body up by getting rid of any margin and padding, just to make sure that it's, you know, spread out uh, all over. And I'm going to give it a background color. It's RGB, this kind of, well, I'll show you. Well, six, it's kind of like a dark gray that I'm going to be using and the font that I want to use in here is also all the font, all the text, sorry, is going to be white, just so it stands out. 
The next thing I want to do is actually use Flexbox in order to make sure that everything is displayed in the center. So by initializing Flexbox, I can now use this command, which is justify content center. I won't be able to use it without display flex. So make sure display flex is there and align item center as well. That's something I'm going to use as well as flex direction. Flex direction column to make sure it's stacked over each other. Okay. And great. I'm also going to actually import a font family that is outside of what we have. So if you go over to font awesome, so if you go over to Google fonts, the font I want to choose is called Anton. So I'm just going to search for it. Uh, I've already been using some here. I don't actually want any of these. So let's go ahead and just remove Oswald, remove all. Anton. So this is the one that I want. So please go ahead and click that and just select this type. There's only one style and you can choose whether to do it in your HTML or CSS. I'm going to choose to put it in my CSS file. Just going to copy that and at the top of this file, I'm going to import it like so as a URL. And that just means that I can now use it thanks to this. So great. So I can now use the font family. Anton with sans serif as a backup. Wonderful. So that is my body. It just means that I've kind of styled everything up to look a bit more like this. The next thing I actually want to style is the uh, game. So let's pick out this div by the ID of game. So this means I need to go for the ID of game, just like so. And I'm just going to say that everything in here is going to have the background color of RGB like this kind of a darker grayish color. Okay. So that's all I'm going to do for now. The other thing I want to do is just make sure that all of these columns are actually stacked next to each other. So I'm also going to use display flex to do this and ta-da, that's what it should look like. For now, of course, we are going to be changing all of this up a little bit later. So what's the next thing we're going to do? Well, let's actually get to um, inciting cards. In fact, while we're here, let's actually just add the styling for a card just so we can visually see things a little bit nicer when they happen. The width of a card I'm going to hard code as 160 pixels. The height I'm going to hard code as 120 pixels. Uh, the background color, I'm just going to make it be that, that Jeopardy blue, which is RGB 2626255. Now I'm going to make it look beveled. So border left, I'm going to say solid RGB. Uh, and then it's going to be like this kind of lighter blue color that I picked out earlier. And it's going to be 10 pixels thick. And then I don't know if there's a shorthand way to do this, but I'm lazy. So I'm just going to do that left, right. And then we have top and bottom and then I'm just going to switch out the colors a little bit so I'm going to make this like a dark blue I'm going to make this another tone of blue just to make it look beveled and then again same here so great uh, I'm just going to make sure all the text is centered too and the font size I'm going to use for the cards is going to be 100 pixels. Okay, it's going to be really big. Let's give it a margin of five pixels. So each card is going to have a margin of five pixels and some padding. And I'm also going to give the line, I'm going to change the line height uh, of the font. Okay, so that's all I've done. So we created a class of card. Now let's actually get to creating some cards. So We've appended the column inside the game. The next thing we need to do is actually work with the questions. So at the moment, we are still in this object, right? We've picked out the genre. The next thing I want to do is pick out this array of questions. And we're going to use for each again to loop over each item in this array. So hopefully that makes sense based on what we've done previously. So as we are currently for eaching, so we're in the for each loop currently, thanks to this, 
Let's get a category. And all I'm going to do is get the category questions this time. So the array and for each item or each question, sorry, let's call it a question. What do we want to happen? Well, as I said, I want to make a card. So document create element div. And I'm just going to call this literally card, just like so. And this time I'm going to go classless add uh, card because that's the, ca the class that we have just created here. So that's what I want to apply to this div. And of course, we need to put it in the column. So let's grab the column and use append. And I'm going to append the card. Okay. Great. You can use a pen child. Append allows you to add multiple things, but you can use a pen child if you want to, if you just want to append one thing, which I guess technically we are doing here. So great. That's what we are doing. At the moment, we won't see much because it's just an empty div. However, we can put some text in here. Uh, in fact, maybe let's do it by the level. So we're looping over each item in the questions array, right? So I want to get each question's level. And if it's easy, so right here after we put in the card, if question level equals easy, well, then I want to get the card and it's in a HTML or in a text. You can do whatever really in an HTML and a text, the same thing. Maybe let's keep it all consistent though. So I know we did it somewhere here in a HTML. We're just going to hard code 100 because that's how many points you get for answering an easy question. And let's do the same for the others. So if it's medium, I want to put in the inner HTML 200. And if it's hard, I'm going to give us 300 points. Okay, so that's literally all I'm doing. So now if I look in here, ta da, that's what we have made. That's our card. And that's the inner HTML that we've given our card. This is looking great. Now, if you watched my tutorial on making a word association game, in that game, we actually, you know, had functions and we passed through a lot of stuff into them in order to work with event listeners. So we're passing through a lot of um, information into functions. This time, I'm going to show you a different way to do this. You can actually set attributes to elements so that you can add more data to them that you can pick out later. And you can do so using the set attribute method. So this is what I'm going to be showcasing for us today. Okay, I'm going to get up this because we're going to be needing to see exactly what I am adding to each div. At the moment, each of these divs just has the class card and the inner HTML of 100, 200 or 300. I'm going to be adding a lot more information to these with the help of set attribute. Of course, this does mean that someone can, you know, inspect the page and cheat at Jeopardy. But, you know, this is just for fun. So, but yeah, just be aware of that. So. I want to essentially append all the information about my question to this div so that when we flip it, we still have access to that information. So like I said, we're going to use set attribute to do this. So I'm going to grab the card. So literally the card that we created, which is the div and that we added the classes to and then we put in the column and then we added in a HTML to. Next, we're going to use set attribute in order to add a data question, which is going to just be the questions question, right? Because we're looping over this questions array, which we called question. This is a question, which is why I've said question, question. I mean, sadly, you know, it's just worked out that way that we have to use question, question. Next, we're going to have question correct. And we're going to go into the question object and get level and as well as the first answer and the second answer. So that's what we've done here. And in fact, if I show you what this looks like, if I refresh it, 
you will now see that each div not only has the class of card, not only has the inner text content of 100, it also has now data question and the actual question, how many players in a football team, how many seconds in an hour, and how many people in China. So that information is all attached to that div that we can't visually see, but it exists. So I'm gonna do the same, so card set attribute for the other things I said. So we've got the data question. Let's have the data correct, which is gonna be question correct. And then also the answers, right? So set attribute data, uh, let's do answer one and go question answers and then go into the first get the first item from this array so this one and then let's get the second one as well so i'm just going to copy this line get the second item by using the index value of one to enter this to get the second item in the array because as we know arrays use indexes now i'm going to do one last thing and use set attribute to add the data value and you might be thinking like oh what but we've used all the information we can in here what what else do you want to do right well i actually want to get this value and also set it to the div so that when we flip the card we still know the value of the card and i can do so with a function so i can get the card and use get inner html and call it so call the method in order to get the inner html of this div which in this case is 100 in this case is 200 and this case is 300. So that's pretty neat if I do say so myself. So now if I refresh this and we look on any one of these, you will see the data question, data answer one, data answer correct and the data value. Why is the data answer two not being added? Ah, it's because data answer two being overridden. So, ta-da! We have all that information as well as the data value now to our disposal. Great! So now let's get to flipping these cards. So I'm going to do so by adding an event listener to our card. So card add event listener and on click of the card I just want to flip the card. So this is a callback function. We need to write this function and if we click on any card this will be caught, okay? But only if we click on the card. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we are done with this function. It is a long one. So the function add category is now done. The next function we're gonna write is the function. So function flip card. So what do we want to happen when we flip the card? Well, we just want it to visually look like we flipped the card, right? So in fact, I just want to get rid of the styling of the div. So I want to get rid of the styling and just make it look like I flipped the card by adding some animations maybe. And then, you know, having uh, the question show up with the two options of the answers. So let's do it. So I'm going to get this card, so this element that I've clicked on, I'm going to get it in the HTML and I'm literally just going to put an empty string. Okay, so it's kind of like a cheat way to empty it out. Now, the next thing I want to do is create a, a div that I've called text display so that we can display the text of the question in and then kind of style it up a little bit. So I'm going to use create element and I'm going to create a div to do this okay so now that we've created the div once again i'm going to get text display and i'm going to use class list add to add a class list that we are yet to write we can use text display or maybe let's choose card text just like so so we're putting in the text display this is good the next thing i want to do is add two buttons so once again i'm going to use document create element and this time i'm going to create a button element and once we have created that button i'm just going to call this first button because i'm not very imaginative but we actually need two buttons so first button and second button again just using the create element method to create a button element so once we have those well of course we're going to have to add 
uh, classes to them. So thank you very much. But this first button is going to have the class first button. And then the second one is going to have the class, you guessed it, second button. So just like so. So we've added the classes and now we just need to add some text into these, right? So I'm going to go first button in a HTML and we are going to get this, whatever we clicked, this get attribute. I'm going to get the attribute. Let's have a look again what's to our disposal. Get attribute data answer one. answer one and of course for the second one we'll get data answer two for the second button so we created the buttons we've added classes to the buttons we've also set the inner html of the buttons to either have one answer or another and of course we need to put these buttons into whatever we click so we're going to use this again this keyword i'm going to do append and I'm actually going to append the text display and then the first button and then the second button. Okay, great. So that is looking good. We of course also need to get the, uh, we need to add in a HTML, we need to actually add the uh, question itself. So we're going to use get attribute to get the data question. making sure to spell it exactly the same as we saved it. So data question like so. Great. So this should now look good. Let's test it out. So let's, oh, something's gone wrong. Event listener is not a function. Okay. Card. Our add event listener should be a capital L here. Okay, so if we click on one now, ta-da! So that is disappearing and we are getting the question and we are getting two buttons. Of course, we need to do some styling because this is not looking good. So one thing I can actually do is change, we're probably going to have to change the font size in here. So we can do so using font style, uh, this style font size. Now let's change it to be 15 pixels. So again, we're just using JavaScript to do this. And we're also going to change the line height from here. Line height is going to be 30 pixels. So now if we click on one of these, amazing. So that is looking much better. There's of course still some things we need to do. One thing we need to do is actually um, add an on click to these buttons to handle if it's the correct answer or not. And also I want to disable clicking on any of these if we are currently answering a question, right? We don't want to cheat. No cheating allowed. And then we also want to add one to the score if the correct answer is clicked. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that. First off, however, let's get to styling some things up. The first thing that I'm going to start up is the buttons. So let's do that. Now, I'm just going to make some space and great. So the first button, I'm just going to give this a background color of RGB 241724. We're going to make it look kind of like retro. And then of course, the second button as well needs to have some styling too. So one, let's go with 190. 57, 37. So we just added two colors to the buttons. We can, let's keep it this kind of retro style though, because I'm kind of strangely into it. You don't have to, of course, you can choose to get rid of it if you wish. Okay, while we are here, let's also style the genre title. So the class of this was genre title, if I remember that correctly. I'm going to give it a background color of the same blue that we had. So RGB 2626 255, like so. Uh, let's text align center. Oops, text align center. Let's make the font size 
I'm going to make it 28 pixels. Let's give it padding, five pixels. Okay, and then also a margin, five pixels too. So that just looks a little bit more like this, just like the game. Great. Okay, so we've done that. The next thing I want to do is handle the click. So let's do that. So now what we want to do, do you know, actually, before we move on to adding the event listeners for the two buttons, I'm actually going to say that if we flip the card, I want to get every single card, every single one, and remove the event listener. So I'm going to use using document query select all and look of anything with the class of card. So that'll be all, all of these cards. Okay, all of these. And I'm going to remove the event listener for them, but only on this flip. So all cards, I'm going to save this as. And I think we need to make this an array. I'm going to make an array from these. Apologies if not. Make sure this query select to all. Uh, and then we're going to get all the cards. And for each card, just going to get each card and remove event listener. I'm going to remove the click and I'm going to remove the flip card. So that now if a card is flipped, we can't click any of them. The flip is disabled. This is cool, right? And I only want to enable it again if we choose an answer. So now let's handle the clicks of the buttons. So I'm going to write a, another function. This function is going to be called, uh, let's call it get result okay so it's just like so and let's move all of this oops let's just move all of this up a little bit so what do i want to happen well i want to if i click on the button right so let's add an event listener to the first let's do it up here first button add event listener if I click on it then I want to get results just as a callback function okay and then let's do the same for the second button as well so they're both going to essentially call this function if we click on them and if we click on it I want to get this so whatever I clicked whatever button I clicked I want to get its parent and its parent is the card so if we have a look at here the button lives in the div with the class of cards. So I want to get the parent of this, right? I want to get the parent. So this parent element. So I'm just going to show you the console log. Uh, let's say this is something const card of button to be really precise, because that's what we're getting. We're getting the card the button belongs to. And then do we have any other console logs in here? I feel like we do. Mm, you do not. Okay. So here's our console log. So if I click on this, click on a button, it will show me its parent, which is this card that belongs to, and you'll see all that data that we need to work with. Okay. So that's quite cool. Let's carry on. So to get the result, well, what I'm going to do is say if card of button, and I'm going to use get attribute to get the attribute of. Well, I guess we want to get the data correct answer, right? We want to get the data correct, which is 11. So we know that this is the correct answer. And we want to make sure it's the same as the inner HTML of the button. So if that equals this inner HTML, then we know it's a correct answer, right? So then we're going to get the score and we are going to essentially add the score by getting, again, um, the data value of the button, which is why we save the data value. So there we go. So I'm going to, once again, go card, button, get attribute, data, value. However, it's a string, right? So we need to pass this through, pass int, to make sure that it's a number type. And then we're going to add it to the score. So score plus the value and we're going to assign it to the variable score. Okay, 
So are we actually saving score anywhere here? I don't believe we are. So I'm going to go let score equal zero to start. Okay, so that's what we're doing. If it's if the answer is correct, we're going to add something to the score. We're then going to show the score in the browser because we're actually not doing that yet. So just get the variable of score after we've added the data value to it and then show it in here. The next thing I'm going to do is actually uh, get the card button and I'm going to also class list add. I'm going to add a correct answer class so that we can change that symbolize that's correct. Let's go with like an orange or something. And then let's uh, actually remove everything in the card itself. We're going to remove the question. We're going to remove these two buttons. And we're just going to show the value that we want if it's correct. So to do this, I'm actually going to leave a little bit of time so it's not so abrupt. OK, so I'm going to use a set timeout to do this. And then we're going to use a while loop to essentially remove children. We're going to remove the last child and then the last child until there's no children left in the parent div. So while card of button first child exists, it's going to keep doing it until there's no first child, right? So while that is true, we're going to get the card of button, remove child, card button, last child. So we're going to essentially, if that makes sense, we're going to keep looping and get rid of the last child, get rid of the last child, get rid of the last child until the last child is the first child, get rid of that, and then there'll be no first child. And this will kind of um, finish running. OK, so we're going to do that. We're going to move everything in it uh, and we're going to do this after 100 milliseconds. And then we're just going to get the card button and then the inner HTML. Like we said, we're just going to make it the uh, value. So get attribute data value. We're just going to show how many points we want. So that's all what happens. All of this is what happens if, you know, the answer is correct. Else, we're going to say wrong answer. So I'm essentially going to just take this line, but this time wrong answer. So that would be like a reddish color, maybe. I haven't decided yet. And this time, we're going to do set timeout uh, and then we're actually still going to remove everything, but this time we're just going to add a zero because we want zero points. We can do it as a number if you want. It's totally up to you. And we're going to do this again after 100 milliseconds. Okay, great. And then afterwards, we're going to add back. We're actually we need to add back all the event listeners to the cards, but also we're going to remove the event listener for this specific card because we're done with it. Remove event listener, click flip card. We're done with this card. We've got our points. No more cheating. And this just means that actually, um, let's perhaps do it up here. So once again, document query, we need to get all the cards again. So everything with the class name of card. And I'm going to save this as all cards. Make an array from this. Again, I'm not really sure if I have to do this. but I'm doing it now. I've committed. Uh, and then all cards for each card. I'm going to, well, just add back in the remove the event listener. OK. Great. And then just some final styling to add the correct answer and incorrect answer. So correct answer. If it's a correct answer, I want the background color to change to RGB 186-186-24. And if it's a wrong answer, then I want to change the background color to be RGB two, two, one, six, four, five, six. Great. So now let's check it out. So this one, when is Christmas? I know it's here. Yay, it's correct. So we see the value. We get 100 to the score and the backgrounds turn yellow. Now this one, what is the capital of Saudi Arabia? I'm going to go with Jeddah. That's the wrong answer, by the way. But I should get a red. Zero points and zero is added. So this is looking wonderful. And of course, I can't click on anything else. 
until I answer this question and then I can click on another question. So even when this is here, can't click on anything, Superman. Wonderful. So this is looking fantastic. We have now finished our Jeopardy game. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I've really enjoyed making this for you. I mean, I think we've done a really good job at this. It is kind of foolproof. Of course, if you uh, come across any bugs, then let me know. But I'm quite happy with this. Wow. Okay. And of course, please feel free to style this up however you wish. That part is totally up to you. Thanks so much again for watching and I hope to see you again soon.